What's going on? It's Alan Brown, aka Bully the Kid. And I actually wanted to uh, do maybe a few videos on this subject. I recently wanted to kind of embark upon some experiment to see what uh, a multiple sub setup would be like in my expedition. So currently I've had um, two eights, two uh, massive audio hippo eights in a ported box. Slaps pretty good. Uh, gives out probably a combined 1000 RMS between the two subs. Really nice for if I want to run my third seat. Like if I want to make use of my third seat, it fits behind the third seat and everything's all good. So it works out pretty well. Then I've done one where it was a uh, 110, an American base. Uh, I want to say it was a American base Elite 10, maybe a VFR or something like that. Maybe the VF Series 10. Pretty beefy uh, sub, dual two, had it run down to one ohm. I had all that on a uh, 1000 watt uh mini max mini uh amplifier put out by down um down for sound so i think it was like the jp 1000 mini max or something like that it's a little orange joint i have a video with that in there and that works out pretty good i don't have to max out my little amp and it still pushes the sub very very well i dig it uh, wanted to upgrade, so I went and bought a JP23 to go with my current setup that I have in my truck, which is two 15s, uh, two Elite 1544s, so dual four uh, subwoofers, got two of them in there in a ported box, and it slaps. I recently added in an epicenter to it so it can like kind of bass correct, make it a more fuller bass experience, and it's... I've only had it in there for two days, but so far I dig it. It makes uh, the bass more present there. I dig it. Uh, does not add any extra bass, but it does fill out kind of the dead spots. Like it gives more information to how the bass is in the music. I dig that. Uh, but that's not what this is about. Right now, this is about this subwoofer that I'm gonna be running in my next little experiment. This is a Hyanka. BSC 12. Hopefully it's a dual two ohm. I haven't opened it yet. Uh, so I'll be opening it up in just a little bit. But the setup is this. Right now, over here, right there, I have uh, a setup that is four 12s. I think one of my subs, I think it's this one, mechanically failed. Like after me breaking it in. For a few weeks so i sent off to amazon to get a replacement and this is that and while i'm here i figured i'd go ahead and make another video and actually kind of tell those that are into car audio and those that may be thinking about buying this subwoofer uh my thoughts on it thus far and we can check it out and i can explain to you how this works because there's four 12s that are inside that box right there and that may be a little bit daunting to some people so i'll explain it so that you would know and if this is something you want to do, it's not that hard to do it. So let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the box up. Check this out. Let's uh, turn this here so you can see it. There you go. All right, so the Hyanka Sagittarius series. Uh, this is the top one, not the uh, lower line. So this one is the 500 watt RMS. And then 1,000 watt peak. I think it's this one here. And then there's a under. There's an under there. So this is the two. So I think this is a DSC. So yeah, that's this one. So it's 550 and then 1100 max. And then uh, they have the lower line, which is the BSM. And that's 275 and 250 respectively between the dual two and the dual four but I have the higher one, so mine is 550 constant, and then uh, 1100 max. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm running it with the JP23, so that's gonna be fitting in there kinda nice as far as what it can constantly do, and what it can do as far as like a burst volume thing. So, 
Let's get this out of here. Start nothing. It's looking all right. Oh, smooth. All right. Has the plastic backing on it. That is plastic that's on there. I think you can take this off if you want to. Uh, it really don't matter. This is going to be inside the box anyway, so I'm not really tripping. But this is the construction of it. This is what it looks like, pretty thick situation here. And uh, as I turn it around, I actually really like this. The fact that they have the terminals on the same side, so it makes it a really easy for wiring and stuff. So, like I said, I'm gonna be wiring this bad boy in a uh, series, and we're about to get into that as to how I go about doing it, what I'm looking for. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about it right now. So. Of course, black is negative, red is positive. Basically, I'm gonna take this one and then jump it to this one and then run these out to the next subwoofer. All right, so basically, I think I left off where I said I'm gonna run this out to the next subwoofer. And it looks kind of like this. I went ahead and made a little diagram as to what it's gonna be. So the thing that I'm trying to factor in is Ohm's Law. So uh, basically, it's a Ohm's law has a few rules that determine what the load is going, going to be going out to that the amplifier actually sees. The, uh, so the amplifier that I'm going to be using is one ohm stable, so I'm shooting for one ohm. So I have four dual two subwoofers that I'm going to be series paralleling down to one ohm. Kind of looks like this. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but as best I could, I try to do a little illustration. So have the four dual twos there. I have the positive and negative jumped, just like I showed you on the subwoofer. Positive and negative jumped, and then the leads go out to the next one. So you can do them this sub into this sub into this sub into this sub out, which is what it's gonna be whenever I go to the amplifier. That's what it actually physically looks like. Um, but yeah, if you had like a terminal block, you can do the same thing, just run these leads directly to the terminal block, and then that one lead out to the amplifier and you'll get the same result. So, reason why I did dual twos is this right here. Um, basically, if you, take, if you take a dual two and you parallel it at the subwoofer, that's gonna end up making it effectively one ohm by itself. So you take uh, the sub or one coil on one side, which is gonna be uh, two ohms, and then the coil on the other side is gonna be two ohms. Then basically you take two times two, coil times the coil, plus the add plus the addition of what those coils are. So you have two times two all over four. So two times two is four all over four, which is the addition of the first coil and the second coil. And then that gives you one, one ohm. Okay, so that's why you can run a dual two setup with you and still get one ohm. That's how you can run it. Now, cool thing is you can take that same principle and you can add in multiple subs to get to, to do the same thing. Now, you may be asking, well, Bull, why, why didn't you use dual fours? Because two dual fours go down to one ohm, right? So if I use four dual fours, that should be one ohm, right? That's, that's no. Either it's going to end up being two ohms or it's going to be 0.5 ohms. And there aren't any, any uh, there aren't many amplifiers that can handle 0.5 ohms constantly so um you could most amplifiers are two ohm stable especially if they're sub amps most of them are um the one i have or the ones that i have are all one ohm stable so that's what i shoot for so using this same idea if you can see it using that very same idea i have four dual two uh subs Two, two, two dual two 
subs wired together after the subs themselves are wired in series and then you parallel those that gives you uh, 0.5 when you put them both together and then you have two other sets of subs those two give you 0.5 now you take those two sets of subs and you put them in series 0.5 plus 0.5 equals 1 ohm that's why the dual 2 setup works in this setup so that's a little bit of ohm's law this is wiring kind of hopefully i made sense of that if you have any questions put it down in the uh, comments and as best i can i'll answer the questions but yeah uh this is going to be the first video where i actually unveil it and then tell you about the project that it is i'm gonna go ahead and make the swap uh take out the sub that's affected I have to verify which one that is again. Uh, I think I know which one it is, but I need to go ahead and put it in the car, verify which sub that is, go ahead and swap them out and um, send it back because it's a one-to-one -one replacement since it mechanically failed. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. Y'all stay tuned for the next video. This is part one. Part two is gonna be uh, me actually testing out the subwoofer, kind of breaking it in and stuff like that. I'm not going to beat them too hard because they are still new. So, you know, stomping them, testing them out. That's probably going to be the next video. So I will join you in the next one. Thank y'all for watching. Again, put in the comments if you have any questions. Share this with a friend. If they want to get into car audio and want to start wiring and stuff like that, dope. You can share this video and maybe to help them out just a little, 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 little bit. Um, yeah, so I might be making some content like this on my personal because I like doing this. So we'll see how it goes. Till next time, Alan Brown, aka Bullet the Kid. Y'all be easy.